All right, folks, Brian Blessing with you here in Las Vegas. Glad to get going talking football, college football. We're going to do weekly conference previews for you here. It's going to be a fun couple of months getting ready for the start of the football season. Always reminding you, check out the Sports Betting Podcast with our pal Adam Burke and my radio show, sportsbookradio.com, on Wednesdays, along with Mark Lawrence from The Playbook. We usually do conference previews and their archive for you, and it's information you can use throughout the course of the season. And we're going to start with the American Athletic Conference overview for you. Uh, a conference market down for the end of the year, historically very poor in bowl games. Five new coaches come in, but there are very good coaches in this conference. And market down when th these conference teams lose a game, then go out of conference. They really have struggled historically, so a little footnote you might want to mark down. All right, let's uh, go to Cincinnati. It was a train wreck. The Tommy uh, Tuberville <laughs> era you kind of went pear-shaped. Uh, and now you're looking at Luke Fickle, who comes in from Ohio State. Uh, and I, I think this is a guy who has that background all the years with Urban Meyer. I look for uh, signs of life. Cincinnati's got some work to do, but I think it could be a team that's on the improve. Then uh, UConn, Randy Edsel, speaking of another new coach. Well, he's new, but he's old. He comes back to Connecticut where he had great success. It just never worked out for Edsel in Maryland. He brings a new offensive coordinator with him, John Dunn. Uh, it comes from the Chicago Bears staff, and I just think there's going to be a a lot of work to be done, especially on the defensive side of the ball for Connecticut. Now, East Carolina, only three wins last year. You know, for years and years with Ruffin McNeil, this is an exciting, high-octane offense. Uh, the bottom line is uh, this program has gone pear-shaped, and specifically, they have really struggled against the better teams, the teams with winning records in conference. So East Carolina's got a lot of work to do to get back on the bean. Now, uh, that is not the situation. Uh, for a Houston team where Major Applewhite inherits a ton of talent. Uh, Ed Oliver, the defensive tackle, one of the best players in the conference. Uh, you know, Houston, there's no reason to think this team does not continue to roll right along. Uh, this is a program on the rise. And again, the recruiting classes have been very good. Memphis is another team that fits the bill here with a ton of experience. Quarterback is kind of the question mark here. Uh, the good news is uh, you've got four starters. Uh, they come back on the offensive line, and that should keep this offense clicking if they can establish the running game. You know, Memphis, a very, very interesting football team. How about the midshipmen? Navy, year in, year out, we know Navy is extremely stout. Well, the one thing you get with Navy is discipline. They don't take a lot of penalties. They're incredible when it comes to moving the sticks and sustaining drives. And the quarterback, Malcolm Penny, could be sitting on a big, big year. I uh, look for Navy. For them, it was kind of a down year last year, but I'd look for Navy to get back on the beam. Well, when we talk about SMU, Chad Morris, the head coach here, uh, this is a team that's finally gained a lot of experience. Uh, and, you know, they get a, a quarterback in Ben Hicks that puts up huge numbers. Uh, he had almost 6,500 yards of passing and 52 touchdowns to speak of know that SMU can score. They've got to improve on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, as for Temple, uh, clearly we're looking at a new coach here with Jeff Collins. Finally gets his shot here. And the quarterback, Frank Nudie, really started to figure things out at the end of last year. Uh, you know, I, I would look for this offense to get a little better. Obviously, Rule did such a good job. And Temple, uh, they were just, you know, one, one of the cellar dwellers. Uh, but this is a program that's clearly turned things around. Tulane, the one thing we can tell you is look for overs all year long. It remains an electric offense. And Willie Fritz uh, is a guy as well. When they play weaker foes, he is more than willing to step on their necks. So if you see Tulane, a big favorite, don't shy away from playing them. Uh, and, then, uh, you know, the, you also sit here and look at a, a Tulsa team uh, that can uh, light it up offensively really electric and you know the hurricanes uh, 10 wins in 2016 looked like they were going to take the next step under phil montgomery uh, the one thing we know about tulsa points points in tempo and more points ucf central florida 200 to 1 actually listed on the board uh, to win the bcs championship scott frost uh you've got experience that's kicked in here uh is as uh you know, Scott Frost went back to Nebraska, but it's recruiting classes and talent galore on the UFC equa UCF equation. Now, nothing says they're not the class, again, of this conference. Now, 
South Florida. Charlie Strong comes in here, and this was a team that had the great quarterback uh, with Quinton Flowers. What are they going to do with the quarterback situation here? Who's going to be the guy? Uh, but one thing is, you think of South Florida as this electric team offensively, but Strong, by nature, is a really conservative coach. I mean, we go back to at the, his Louisville days. It almost seemed like at times he held back Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, it's the American Athletic Conference, and I, I'm thinking, you know, you're looking at five established coaches, but it's a breeding ground uh, for new coaches to make a mark and move on. Uh, it's an intriguing conference, you know, other than UCF and Memphis, you know, no one that's really uh, on the big scale nationally uh, capable of pulling off, you know, any massive upsets. But collectively, it's an entertaining conference that more often than not features high-octane offenses. And it's the beauty of college football in this day and age. These games are on TV. We get a chance to see these teams. And if you latch onto a team or two in a specific conference like the AAC, it's an opportunity to ride that wave and maybe make a little bit of money for you over the course of a long college football season. We're just off to the races. Glad to be with you here at bangthebook.com. College football is not that far away. Next week, we're going to preview the ACC right here at bangthebook.com.